turn in your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're going to look at all of it. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering gathered to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if, it, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the world. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perished, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation, and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. Do you ever stop and think about the things that are going on behind the scenes in our world today? Do you ever just stop and wonder what is happening in our world today that we're not seeing? Are we living in the last days right now? Are we living in the last days? Is the enemy working behind the scenes to bring about the destruction of the world? Our scripture today tells us that, the, that Jesus will not return until the man of lawlessness is revealed. Now, one day this week, I, or back on May 21st, just a, a week and a half ago, I was sitting there thinking, May 21st, May 21st, what's special about May 21st? And, and I kept thinking all day long, and it just, it never did occur to me what was special about May 21st. And then I read the scriptures for my sermon today, and then God reminded me about what May 21st was. And I don't know if you've heard the story, but uh, this is from the Wikipedia page. It says, a man named Harold Camping had made a prediction that on May 21st, 2011, that Jesus Christ would return to earth, whereupon the saved would be taken up to, to heaven in the rapture, and that there would follow five months of fire, brimstone, and plagues on earth, with millions of people dying each day, culminating on October 21st, 2011, with the final destruction of the world. We had previously he had previously predicted that Judgment Day would occur on or about September 6, 1994. So he's already failed once, and now he's predicting on May 21st, 2011, uh, that, there's, uh, that this is the correct date. So his prediction for May 21st, 2011 was wi widely reported, in part because of a large-scale publicity campaign by family radio, and it prompted ridicule from atheist organizations 
and rebuttals from Christian organizations. After May 21st passed without the predicted incidents, Camping said he believed that a spiritual judgment had occurred on that date and that the physical rapture would occur on October 21st, 2011, simultaneously with the final destruction of the universe by God. Except for one press appearance on May 23rd, 2011, Camping largely avoided press interviews after May 21st, particularly, particularly after he suffered a stroke in June of 2011. And after October 21st, 2011 passed, without the predicted apocalypse, the mainstream media labeled Camping a false prophet and, doc and commented that his ministry would collapse after the failed doomsday prediction. Uh, his ministry is, we are seven years later, and his ministry is still going. Now, I don't know how you go out and you make such a bold prediction and you get proven to be false and you still have people that are willing to follow what you taught. I don't understand that. But his ministry is, is still going today. Uh, he did pass away, I think, in 2013. So his disciples are still carrying on. I don't know how you do that. But God has an order that must be followed in our world today. We have to follow that order. If we don't, if we get out of that order, then it's going to prove that God's word is false. So we have to follow God's order. Harold Camping, he tried to circumnavigate through God's word and make a false prediction. There's people in this world that they would like to circumnavigate. They'd like to go around God's word because they don't like what it says. It says some tough things in there, so they just avoid it. They don't want to look at it. But you know what? When you do that, when you make failed prophecy predictions, you're going to be proven to be false. Now, we need to pay attention to what God's Word is saying. We need to go through our life adhering to the Word of God because it's what gives us life. We cannot go through life paying attention to the parts that we enjoy and ignoring the parts that we don't. We have to look at the whole of Scripture. And when we stand before God, we cannot plead ignorance of Scripture. I was looking on Facebook, and, and I made a point uh, years ago, and I, I don't think I reposted it, uh, but there was somebody on there that said, well, I would disagree with you. Uh, it's true, I have not read the Bible, but uh, I would disagree with what you're saying. Uh, you know, he's going to pass away one day and he's going to stand before a holy God and his only excuse is going to be, well, well, I didn't know your word said that. That's not going to stand. We cannot plead ignorance before a holy and just God. It's not going to work that way. We can't go outside of God's word by making false prophecies like Harold Camping did. And we cannot go out outside of God's word and believe that we're going to go to heaven because we're basically good people. We are not basically good people. We discussed that in our Sunday school today. Uh, we're basically people that are born in sin. And a sinful person is not good. Now we might do some good things. We might reflect God's image in doing some good things on this earth. But we're not good. We're only good by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the one that makes us good. So we cannot go outside of God's word and, and try to come up with some way uh, that we're going to get to heaven other than Jesus Christ. Now, if you haven't done so, I would beg you to read all of the New Testament. If you have never sat and read from Matthew to Revelation, I would beg you to read God's word and see what it says in there about your eternity. I would ask you to read it and ask God to, to open up your eyes and your heart to what he's trying to say. Because if we don't know God's word, then we're going to fall for anything in this world. And that's exactly what Harold Camping did. He led people to false prophecy. He was a false prophet. Mark chapter 13, verse 32 through 33, where Jesus said, But of the day and hour no one knows. No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, 
but only the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Now, if it's only the Father that knows, the Son didn't know, nobody else in the world knew, only the Father knows, then why do people go out of their way to try to predict a date for the end of the world? They're going against what God's Word says, but they do it all the time. As I've shared a, a, a month or so ago, I gave you a list of some false prophets that were in there. They went outside of God's Word. Now, I'm not going to give you a date because I don't know. But I will tell you that we are living in the last days today. The scriptures tell us that. <clears throat> they tell us about what's going on around the world. There's, there's evil that's being worked behind the scenes to open up the door for the man of law, lawlessness or uh, the son of perdition, as they called him. And he's going to step out onto the stage and he's going to play his part. Look at verses 5 through verse 10. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is in according is according to the work to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. There is a power that is holding back the man of lawlessness. And that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is at work. He's working overtime right now trying to find the people that are going to believe in Jesus Christ and they're going to give their lives to Him. He is working in their lives right now to do that. And He's also working at holding the man of lawlessness at bay. Now when we look at our world right now, we can certainly ask ourselves the question, what is... What is going on with our world? Can people not see all the evil that is running around in our world? Can they not see what they're doing is wrong? You see, the world has it backwards. They, they say what's good is bad and what's bad is good. And if we look at it, we're looking at it with the eyes of, of God. We can see what this world is doing. I'm at a loss for words. And how somebody can even think it is okay for a mother to end her pregnancy taking the life of the fetus that's inside of her. I'm at a loss. I don't understand. How can you not look at that and not see that there's a baby inside the mother's womb? But there's doctors out there. They know it, but they turn a blind eye to it because they're listening to the son of perdition. They're listening to the devil as he's speaking to them and guiding their lives. Now that stage is being set up for the son of perdition to come and enter into our world and to play his part in, in bringing about the end of life as we know it here on earth. He's there to prepare that stage. But at first, had to, but before he can do that, there first has to be a great turning away from God. In our world. Now, I don't know about you, but our world is definitely turning. And they're turning at a rapid pace. Not only in our country, but around the world, people are turning away from God. They don't like what His Word says because it, it might dictate how they should be living their life. So they turn away from God. They, they don't want any part of that. But our world is certainly doing that. They're turning away, and we can see that clearly. Satan has spread the lie that just, just be a good person. Just don't try to harm anybody. Just go out there. You know, my friend on Facebook, that's what they were saying. I'm a good person. I'm not out to harm anybody. And they don't understand. Being a good person is not how you're going to get to heaven. The only way that we're going to get to heaven is by faith. 
our faith in Jesus Christ when we trust in Him. You see, most people in this world, they think, well, I'm, I'm not that hardcore criminal. I'm not the murderer. I'm not the thief. I'm not out there doing all these bad things. So surely God will let me come into heaven. It's not going to happen like that. We only get to heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a great delusion that God's going to send on the people that, that refuse, refuse to believe God's word. He's going to blind their eyes to what's good so that that will open up the door to bring in the evil one that's going to turn our world around. Now, delusion is best evolved when we begin to think that our world is basically okay. I don't know about you, but our world is in deep trouble. Sin is, I, I can see sin just running rampant throughout our world. It's filled with sin and it's growing daily. Ignoring the problem is just going to speed up the growth process for the end of the world to come. Look at verse 11 through 12. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in righteousness God covers up the eyes he does not allow them to see because he knows deep down that they are never going to turn to him he knows the beginning from the end it's not that God went out and handpicked and said okay Peggy I like you so uh, you're going to heaven uh, Kenny I don't like you so there's nothing you're going to do to go to heaven that's not the way God works God knows the beginning of time and he knows the end of time here on earth because he is not in time. He's on the outside looking into our world. He can come in and enter this at any point that he wants to. And he did come in and send his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross. But God knows who is going to believe. He sends the word out to every person in the world. In some way or another, he sends them information about his son, Jesus Christ. And the world can either reject it or they can embrace it. Individuals can reject it or they can embrace it. And God knows who is going to embrace his word. So he'll send a, a blind eye. He will cover their eyes to the sin that's going on. Because he knows that they will not believe in his word. We don't believe God's word, but we ignore what it says and we go out and we do whatever we want in life. We think that, that God has put us here to just uh, have pleasure all throughout life. Do whatever we want, no matter what it is, go out and do it. And that we're not going to be held accountable. But we are held accountable. We can either believe God's word and it's true and we can live it, live it out in faith or we can deny it. And we can go out and do what the devil tells us to do with our life. The choice is always up to us to believe God's word or to believe the lie. Now, if we've chosen to follow God, if we have given him our lives, then there's a message, a message for us about the end times. Look at it in 13 through 17. But we are bound to give you thanks. We are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which you were taught, whether by word or epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We are to stand fast by holding on to the instructions that he has left us in his word. Standing fast means that we are firmly fixed on God's word. We know God's word and we live it. And then we go out and we share it. 
We don't yield to the way that the world wants us to live our lives. We live our lives according to the way that God wants us to live our lives. We live on the promises of God that by faith we're going to see Him one day and we're going to live eternally with Him. Paul said that he again was thankful to God for the Thessalonians because they didn't only uh, hear what was going on, they were living their lives by faith. It was evident by the way that they lived their lives. People could see it. Now our faith will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ, the one that has bought our salvation by his blood on the cross of Calvary and by his resurrection. It is Jesus Christ who comforts us and establishes us in every good word and work. When we have Jesus reigning in our hearts, then our speech will bring others to the light of the gospel. And our actions will lead them to faith in Jesus. If they see it living in us, then they're more likely going to believe that God is real and that he did what he said he did in his word. And then once we believe, then God begins that process of sanctification. He makes us holy as we grow each day in his word. God begins that process to make us look more like Jesus Christ. Now the devil, he's working full time in our world today. He's, he's working hard because he knows his time is short. He's, he's trying to get everything in place so that the man of lawlessness can come in and set up his, his false godhood before the world. Now the end is going to come. The end of our world is going to come. We are living in the last days. When we look at the scriptures, when you know what the scriptures say about the last days, you can physically see that our world, we're living in the last days. The end is going to come. The only question is, are you ready? Are you ready when the man of lawlessness steps on the stage? Are you living your life by faith? Are you covered by the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? Anything less is, is just not going to do us any good. We have to have faith in Jesus in order to enter into heaven. A life that is lived by faith is pleasing to God. When people can see our faith, that pleases God, that makes Him happy. So what I want to tell you in the scriptures today, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, then stand fast. Be prepared for that day is coming. That day that's going to be the end of things as we know it. And we must be prepared. If we're not prepared, it's not going to be a happy place to live. While the man of lawlessness runs wild in this world. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you how you can prepare us. You can prepare our hearts as you sanctify us through your word and help us to grow. God, I praise you for being with us in those times that we need you. Sometimes we might need you to just pick us up and carry us. So we praise you for that. We would ask that you would walk beside us and help us to be strong in word and in deed so that this world can see Christ living in us. So Father, we ask that from you. We praise you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen.